Waters Hub Network invites you to the Born Servants of Christ Night Vigils with the heavenly mandates to watch over the nations globally, calling men to the place of prayer. Calling saints to their priesthood order and calling men to the inheritance in Christ. I'm seeing you seated actually right where you are, but I see a woman and she's trying to wake you up to take your seat. So pray that whatever God has for you, nobody will be able to take your position. Join us every Friday from 9 p.m. to 5 a.m. at the CPF House along Parliament Road in Nairobi CBD, hosted by Charles and Jones, the Watchers Hub Network, securing territories. This is not just a sermon for us as a Watchers Hub, but this is a sermon for the Enton Church. Because we are at the time that you should all be aware we are in the end time. And so how we prepare is very, very key. So the title of the sermon this morning is The Seven Spirits of God. The Seven Spirits of God. That is a sermon title for today. And I'm going to start by reading the book of Revelation chapter number 4, verses number 5. The book of Revelation chapter number 4, verses number 5 says, And out of the throne proceeded the lightnings and thunderings and voices. And there were seven lamps of fire burning before the throne which are the seven spirits of God. And so here, we are seeing John is seeing into the heavens, and he's seeing something very important, which is the seven lamps of fire burning before the throne. And he explains which are the seven spirits of God. Now, I want you to know that what John is seeing at this specific time, Moses saw. Not only did Moses see it, but he was instructed even to go ahead and build um, the golden lampstand when he was constructing the tabernacle. So John is seeing something that has been there before, but now he's seeing it in heaven. And he's telling us that this thing is actually the seven spirits of God. And you know, sometimes when you read these things in the Bible, we just pass it because when things begin to get complicated and uh, <laughs> the Bible begins to tell you about the seven spirits of God, you ask yourself, seven, I thought we had one Holy Spirit. So where is this now seven spirits of God coming from? But no, the Lord has been revealing to me that we are the end time church. And the things that John saw, we must begin to understand them because they concern, they concern us and we cannot ignore them. Now, this same thing, which is the, the golden lampstand that Moses saw, that John saw, we see also that Zechariah, who is a prophet, saw it also. But now, what I love about what Zechariah saw, it is very, very clear. In fact, he explains uh, the whole scenario about what he saw. And so before we proceed on me trying to break down what is the meaning of this, I want to read to us what Zechariah, the prophet, saw. So let me read the book of Zechariah, chapter number 4, from verses number 1 to 9. That is the book of Zechariah, chapter number 4, from verses number 1 to 9. Then the angel who had been talking with me returned and woke me as though has been asleep. What do you see now? He asked. I answered, I see a solid gold lampstand with a bowl of oil on top of it. Around the bowl are seven lamps, each having seven sprouts, with wicks, and I see two olive trees, one on each side of the bowl. Then I asked the angel, what are these, my Lord? What do you mean? What do they mean? Verse 5, don't you know the angel asked, no, my Lord. I replied, then he answered and spake unto me, saying, this is the word of the Lord unto Zerubbabel, saying, not by might, nor by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord of hosts. Who art thou, O great mountain, before Zerubbabel? Thou shalt become a plain, and he shall bring forth the headstone thereof with shoutings, crying, Grace, grace, unto it. Verses 8. 
Moreover, the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, The hands of the Zerubbabel have laid the foundation of this house. His hands shall also finish it. And thou shalt know that the Lord of hosts has sent me unto you. So that is what Zechariah the prophet saw. So when John is seeing the, the lampstand, the golden lampstand in heaven, he, he just tells us these are the seven spirits of God. So Moses again is instructed to build it. However, now here we see Zechariah saw exactly what they are seeing, but he had an explanation. What is this? So what is God telling us as a church of the end time? I want you now to listen to me very carefully because this thing is very, very important. So I want you to first of all understand who was Zerubbabel and because why Zechariah was seeing this? Because it was a, mo uh, a message to Zerubbabel, who was the governor of Judah. Now, Zerubbabel was one of the exiles that came from uh, Babylon. So Zerubbabel was one of the men who came from exile in Babylon. In fact, his name suggests that he was born in Babylon. That is why he's called Zerubbabel. But then... He got the inspiration of rebuilding the temple of Solomon the second time. Remember, Solomon had built it. It was destroyed. And now he got the inspiration to build it again in the time of Zechariah, in the time of Haggai, in the time of Ezra. But Ezra was a priest. And also in the time of Malachi. So that is the background of who Zerubbabel was. He was the governor of Judah. Now, so he got the inspiration to rebuild the temple because now they have been released to go back to Jerusalem and rebuild the temple. Remember, the Lord was using uh, King Cyrus for them to be able to rebuild. But then when they got to Jerusalem, there was a lot of opposition. In fact, there was a lot of challenge. It took so many years for them to even be able to accomplish this uh, construction of the temple. At some point, the construction stopped for a long time because kings came and they would stop and there were other opposers in Jerusalem who could not allow them to build and so I am saying this to let you understand why then God will speak to Zechariah about this issue we are looking at about the seven spirits of God so the reason God is speaking to Zechariah the prophet it is because Zechariah as a prophet has a mandate to speak to Zerubbabel who is the one that is building because remember this is a man who is a governor he's discouraged possibly because after so many years of trying to construct uh, the temple it is not working so God had to raise a voice to speak to Zerubbabel and that is where we get this uh, this scripture we keep on mentioning is not by might is not by power but by the spirit so most of us understand that part However, it came about because Zerubbabel was really, really down in terms of trying to accomplish something that the Lord said it should be done, but it seemed like it was not working. And so God raised the prophet Zechariah to give him the word. But now it was not just a normal word. See what he saw. And I want to explain to you concerning the seven spirits of God and what Zechariah saw. So Zechariah is seeing, you know, the... If you see where we began there, he's talking about the angel of the Lord. You know, he's asking him, what are you seeing now? And he say, I see a solid gold lampstand with a bowl of oil on it. So I want to explain because I don't want to leave anybody saying I don't understand the book of Revelation. I don't understand what Zechariah So This is very simple. So this is what he's seeing because I want you to get it. So Zechariah is seeing a golden lampstand. So I want you to see this pulpit as a golden lampstand. Lampstand is normal. So you guys understand what is a lampstand. It is golden, but then um, he continues to say that on, on it, that is like a bowl. But then there are seven lamps. Some Bibles who say uh, seven candlesticks or something. That is what you possibly hear called the menorah. And so this is a golden lampstand. And there is seven candles here or seven lampstands. And he continued to see, now this is Zechariah seeing for Zerubbabel, that there are two olive trees on each and every side of the golden lampstand. So assume this is an olive tree and this is an olive tree. He sees that the oil that is burning on this seven lampstand is drawing uh, 
that oil from these olive trees. Are you getting the picture? So the reason why these olive trees are next to the golden lamp stand that has seven lamps is because it needs to draw the oil to burn from these olive trees. Is it clear now? So that is the picture Zechariah is seeing. And then he tells Zerubbabel, it is not by might, it is not by power, but, but by the spirit. So why did the Lord just not say that? Why bring a whole picture of a golden lampstand with seven lights with olive trees? Why not just tell Zerubbabel is not by might or by power, Zerubbabel, you are going to build by the spirit because the Lord needed to make clear to Zerubbabel in matters of building, in matters of accomplishing and building the temple and doing what God have called you to do as Israel or individually, or not just take what you think. It is not just the kind of understanding you have, Zerubbabel, concerning the spirit. I want you, Zerubbabel, to understand the spirit from my perspective as God. If Zechariah went to Zerubbabel and told him just it's not by might or by power but by the spirit, he could have just gotten it is by the Holy Spirit which is very clear. But now this whole scenario, it is to cause us to begin to probe and ask ourselves, so what is, what is this that the Lord is showing? is by the spirit so what is the meaning of this so it is, seems in the eyes of the lord and in the eyes of the church our understanding of the spirit is very different john saw it we have read that moses was given instruction to build it or to have it in the tabernacle to represent the seven spirits of god Zechariah saw it. So why is it that we in our time, or when we're understanding the Holy Spirit, our understanding is just the Holy Spirit, while when God is demonstrating or drawing a picture to us to see the Holy Spirit, he is revealing to him in seven ways. So Zerubbabel is being open to an understanding that this thing you are doing, even though it is by the spirit, I want you to catch what I mean by the spirit. And so that is where this picture is given here. So we as the end time church, as the watchers hub, I want to number one to know that when we are talking about the seven spirits of God, the Holy Spirit is one, but he has seven functions. The Holy Spirit is one, but he can be in seven dimensions. And I know this is something that sometimes people may not really spend time to look at it because we like the simple things. But now we are at that place where as the entering church, we need to begin asking ourselves the right questions. Why would God speak to a man who is building the temple? And instead of him just simplifying things to him, he decides to take him through the longer route and show him a kind of a complicated scenario. Why? The same God who take John, one of the apostles, to heaven and he shows him the golden lampstand and he says those are the seven spirits of God. Can we still continue ignoring the fact that there is something more that we just think that we know? And so when we are talking about the seven spirits of God, God is calling us as a rubble, as a people who are building these last days. Remember, number one, we are the temple of the Holy Spirit. More than that, we are the one that God is using to do what he wants to do in these end times. So God is calling us as the Rubabels to begin understanding how he works. Yes, he works by the spirit, but because of where God is taking us and because of the opposition we are facing as the Rubabel, it is not just going to take a naive way of working with the spirit. It's going to cause us to get to a place that we are able to operate in the seven dimensions of the spirit. Because for a long time, the church has only understood the Holy Spirit by tongues. For a long time, the church has only understood the Holy Spirit by just people doing the things that they do 
by the spirit which is really correct. People fall, people shout, people cry, and we see dreams and visions and all that. And that is truly by the spirit. But now God is telling Zerubbabel, the man anointed, appointed to build in this end time, it is not just going to take that. It is going to take more than that. And it's going to take the seven spirits of God for us to be able to stand against the opposition of our time. For us to be able to overcome the darkness of our age. And so, number seven is a number that most of us understand that it represents the completeness of God or perfection. So it is to mean, when you're talking about the seven spirits of God, it is when the Holy Spirit functions in his seven dimensions, then there is completeness. Then there is perfection. It is to mean if Zerubbabel was going to build just by the knowledge of it's by the spirit or just when one of the lampstand was on it will mean he would have built without the completeness of the spirit this is to say as the body of christ as a person as an individual it is time for you to desire to showcase god in your own way in every function of the spirit most of us you see when these seven uh candles are lit the more you have light right if you have one candle lit among the seven remember these candles are getting the oil from these olive trees and of course we know that olive trees this is christ right yes he's the anointed one so these olive trees basically represent christ so and we all know God is also one, but he's also in three. So in the matters of God, we need to begin opening our mind to the diversity of the spirit. So yes, Christ, and I'm going to read another scripture even as we proceed. So we are getting the anointing from Christ, he's the anointed one. And once we have that oil flowing into our lamp, the golden lamp stand, there are seven functions that they need to begin working in our lives. Now, most of us, we get one candle lit or one lamp lit and we think that is all there is in the spirit and that's why we are not seeing the move of god as we should be seeing because once we see one candle has been light i mean maybe it's the candle of prophecy or is a candle of evangelism or a candle of business in terms of whatever you do then you're thinking that is all there is but now we are seeing zerubbabel if you're going to do then what god wants you to do if you're going to build in this and time the rubabel or the seven functions of the spirit need to function not just in the body of christ but in your life as an individual when we just allow the spirit of god to manifest partially then we live in partial darkness this is one of the reasons you see that people are really doing a lot of activities and we, it's kind of the activities we are doing, they are not bringing the results that we should be getting. Why? Because we lack understanding that there are other functions of the spirit and we need to really stay until the seven functions of the spirit begin to function in our life. You see, if we allow the spirit of God to light in the seven functions. Remember, when you have the seven lamps stand, those candles, the menorah has seven lamps. If you're in a dark room and you light one, you're going to get light, but it will not light everywhere. And that is how you operate some time. So we have one candle lit, but there is still a lot of darkness. That is what I'm trying to explain. So you find that is the body of Christ. There is one candle lit, but the darkness seems to be more. The opposition seems to be more. Two candle lit, you still gonna have more light, but still is not everything. So now it tells you that is why we keep on praying. I need more. Like you feel there is something, but you cannot even explain what this thing is. You know there is something you're still lacking. It is because the Holy Ghost, there is a way he functions in fullness. I know most of the time we enjoy when we're in God's presence and there is a lot of move of the Spirit, but I want you to have a sober mind as I speak on what the Lord is telling us because it is an emergency for us as a ministry to begin to allow these dimensions to work. God 
had to speak to a prophet and draw that picture very well for the prophet to see, for him to explain to Zerubbabel. Because Zerubbabel is the governor. If he's not explained graphically, he's going to think that he's going to build by his own ability. He's going to think that he's going to build by connections. He's going to think he's going to build, uh, you know, by the normal means people build. Remember, Zerubbabel was not just a governor who was a heathen. No, this is a man who began to build by inspiration of prophecy. So he knows God. But it tells me that Zerubbabel, you can know God, but you miss his different types of functions. It means as a Zerubbabel, you can know God. And at the end of the day, you don't allow him to really express himself in the diversity that he's able to express himself as God the Spirit. And so we see here, God took time to really lay down this thing. This thing he spoke to John and allowed him to see. And we don't get much explanation from John. He spoke to Moses about it. We don't get much explanation uh, from Moses. But now when he came to Zechariah, and I believe with all my heart, that the Lord allowed Zechariah to see the whole explanation for the end time church because the darkness that we are dealing with at this specific time, it is going to take more than prophecy for us to overcome. It is going to take more than just people who can pray for us to be able to be on top of the darkness that is here right now in this world. If we are going to really establish the bride that Christ is coming for, the pure bride, if we are going to establish that bride, it is going to take more than what we are exposed to right now. How many of you believe there is more? And you see, the fact that we believe there is more, there is a posture that we should have going forward to expect the more. In fact, where we are right now is a place where you tell the Holy Spirit, I don't even have an understanding of what you want to do or how you want to do it, but Lord, I'm open. I'm open to what you're doing in this season. Because when it comes to the seven spirits of God, it's deeper than we can ever maybe fathom or even that I can ever even try to preach about it. So, I want you to see something here. That... The, the temple that Zerubbabel, now uh, uh, let me go back a little bit. When they laid the foundation of the temple, okay, the Bible says in the book of Ezra, when the old people, the elders of Israel saw the foundation, not even the complete temple, when they saw the foundation of that temple, they wept. But now the young people, when they saw it, they rejoiced. Why did they cry? They cried because they knew the original foundation of the temple of Solomon. And now they are seeing the foundation that they have laid, Zerubbabel has laid, and now they are crying. The new people are excited because all they know is that we are building and we are on course. We are building. What does that tell you? And it tells you that there is a pattern. There is a way it should be done. Because if what Zerubbabel laid as the foundation caused the old generation to cry and the new to rejoice, it means there is an understanding and there is a knowledge the old generation had that the new didn't have. So we as Zerubbabel, we must be at the place where we are with the Spirit for us to understand the pattern that the Spirit of God wants us to build with. Lest we build, lest we have a foundation that is faulty and we are thinking is correct. Lest we are busy with things we are thinking that is godly. And of course they are godly things, we are not doing this, they are not godly. But they are, they are not according to pattern. They are not in the standard of God. This is when you find somebody that God has called and you've already laid a foundation. Of course, you are born again. You have a foundation of salvation. God has called you as an evangelist or God has called you in ministry. And you are doing ministry. You're very busy with it. But at the end of the day, the foundation of what you are doing, if Paul was to see it, he would weep. Because that thing that you are calling powerful, that ministry that you are feeling at the top of the world, that prophetic dimension you are thinking it is so powerful. If Elijah would see that foundation you are calling powerful as a prophet, he would weep. And so Zerubbabel had already, the time Zechariah is giving to him this word, the foundation was already laid. So he was bringing him a word that he will finish, but what he was to finish was not in accordance with the glory level that it was supposed to be. 
So God is calling us as an entire church and as a ministry to first of all begin uh, to begin to probe the, the foundations of the things we are building at a personal level in your family, what God has told you to do. What is the foundation? Is that what God said? Is that the level of glory that the Lord wants you to build with? If somebody like Elijah will come today and find that the level of what we are calling prophecy is giving people their names and their account numbers. And, and Elijah, not that it is wrong, the Spirit of God is able to reveal that. But now look at Elijah. In his time as a prophet, he was called to face Jezebel. In the time of Elijah as a prophet, he established the prophetic that it had honor. They knew that if Elijah says something, it is done. So the foundation that was laid by Elijah prophetically, we can see it. We can see what he did, we can see the results. So if Elijah will come today and sit in our services and listen to what we are referring to as prophecy, he would weep. So when the elders of Israel saw the foundation, they cried. And so as the end time church, we have to go back to the foundation. There are things we've been taught. There are things that have been built in us. We believe they are godly. We believe they are powerful. We believe they are the patterns of God. But really, God is calling us to go back and look at the foundation that was laid. I don't know why they didn't look at the foundation that Solomon had laid and built in accordance with the glory of the foundation. I don't know what it was that made them build a foundation that was not really in accordance with the level that Solomon had started. And so you, as a pastor, you need to ask yourself, now that you are born again, now that you know God wants you to do A, B, C, D, Whoever lived that calling before you, was that the foundation they laid? If you're a Moses and you're here, if you're a Joseph and you're here, you're saying you're a businessman, you're a businesswoman, you're the next millionaire, we agree with you. In fact, we say amen together with you. But when Joseph laid the foundation for us to look at, we can look at it and we can see that yes, he was a man that went through a lot. He was even in prison. But because God had to lift him in a way that we are going to know he existed, and it was also recorded what he did, he made sure that he left a legacy. Anybody calling themselves a millionaire, an economic apostle, they will see what happened in the days of Joseph. The foundation that Joseph laid economically, was so powerful that even when there was hunger everywhere, there was food in Egypt. Now, we are saying we are financial apostles, and that is good because I believe that's God's will, and that is the prophecy over your life. But then, when a man laid the foundation like you have laid, he fed nations. He fed nations that even Israel went to Egypt to buy food. When Daniel laid the foundation of government, he laid it in a way that you, when you raise, and God calls you to be in a place of power, place of legislation, you will see how those who are in government live. You will see the foundation Daniel laid. So Zerubbabel, when you're building in terms of your calling as a legislator, what foundation are you building on? Because if you're building on the foundation of Daniel, there is a way we shall know surely that is the correct foundation. Because when Daniel built in terms of government, he made a whole nation called Babylon to say, there is no other God but the God of Daniel. But look at our time. Yes, we are building. Yes, we are called the church. But instead of the government or the people in the marketplace recognizing our God, we are the one taking offerings. We are the one going to get their help. So that is why God is speaking to us, Zerubbabel, there is a pattern. If we finish this thing the way it's supposed to be finished, if you have the intensity of the spirit that we are supposed to have, that is the way we are going to have to build. We as the Watchers Hub, as we build ministry, 
we have to build in accordance to the plan of God that he has for us as a ministry. Everybody else could be doing what ministries do to look relevant in the time. If you look at how the apostles build ministry, they build their ministries on the foundation of their lives, their physical lives. I mean, they, they build ministries on the foundation of their blood. But if you look at how we are building the ministry, if you look at how we are building the church of God right now, we are building the church on the foundation of prosperity. We are building the church on the foundation of just increase as long as you're doing good. But if you look at the foundation that Paul laid, that Peter laid, that Christ laid, it was by blood. So you as a watcher, if you're caught in the ministry or in your level of calling, you have to know this end time church. What is going to cause us to be powerful is when we learn how to lay the foundation of ministry and lay our lives at the altar. Am I saying you will not have a good life? I'm not saying that. You have a good life. Even Jesus had the most expensive dress code. They even divided it, but he died. So it is a call for us to begin understanding what is going to really stand in this end time. So Zerubbabel had to be explained what to do. It is by the spirit. Which spirit is Zerubbabel? By the seven spirits. You see, when you have your foundation right, you welcome the working of the spirit. When you have your foundation wrong, even the structure will be wrong. So most of us have missed it in the place of foundation. You find that the mentality we have concerning family, the mentality we have concerning marriage, it is a mental mentality that is of Babylon. So most of us are building in accordance with the patterns of Babylon. Most of us are looking for spouses in accordance to the patterns of Babylon. So our foundation is wrong. It is time we go back to God and let him help us to really erect that foundation that is of spirit. Praise the name of the Lord. And so Zerubbabel had to have this understanding and I, I can see you're not getting it. I can see now the golden lampstand is not a puzzle anymore. Now you understand why, right? I know most of you have been going through the Bible, and once you get there, where John is talking about the seven lampstands and the, what is this? You go to the next verse, the next chapter. But now it is, it is so important, we cannot afford to pass by it. Not only that, we have to go before God, trusting him that we are going to operate in these seven functions of the Spirit. Now, so Zerubbabel, once he got to understand that, it was very, very easy, even though he had laid the foundation, which made some people cry and some people rejoice. Even though he had laid the foundation, then he had now a quickening of how he's going to do it. What am I saying? Once you hear what I'm saying today, you cannot now begin to ask yourself, so what is happening? You need to go back and look and ask yourself, so what is happening in my life? Am I operating the seven functions of the Spirit? Have I allowed the Holy Spirit to manifest himself through me in his seven dimensions. You see, being the end time church, it is scary that we are still at the level where we still can't interpret dreams. Well, I'm not saying everybody should be a Joseph, but we should be able to know the language of the spirit. Okay? You should be able to know the language of the spirit. So you see, our foundation really needs revisiting. People cannot interpret dreams. People are still being chased by, you know, you'd rather be chased by a lion in the dream. Maybe the lion of Judah is chasing you. <laughs> but if you're still being chased by cattle and goats and dogs in the dream, and yet you're the Zerubbabel that is supposed to be building. So you see, our foundation is so infantile that what is ahead of us, most of us are not able to conquer. And I believe with all my heart, 
there is a quickening of prayer, especially at this specific time, because the Lord wants to communicate his heart to his people. So if you see us gathering like this, nobody sent you, um, you know, a message telling you to come. I didn't call you. Nobody here called you to come. You came. Because the Lord is calling his people. The Lord is gathering his people to begin getting the knowledge that we need for us to be able to finish this race in the glory we are supposed to finish it. Because the Bible still says that the former glory is going to be former. But now the new one is really going to be glorious. This former church, our glory is going to be so glorious than the former one. Are you getting it? So there is no way possible that the Lord will let that go down the drain. He's going to do anything for us to be able to understand this thing. Hallelujah. And so we have seen here that the olive trees, they were supplying the golden lampstand with oil. Very, very simple. It is to mean Zerubbabel. If you're going to light, the source of your light should be from the olive trees. Listen to me, church. There are so many things that cause us to light. Sometimes we become big because of different things. But here, God is showing Zechariah, if Zerubbabel, you're going to finish this thing and build well. The source of your power. The source, you see, the light is power. The source of your power has to be Christ. In other words, as we are checking our foundation, are we really lighting from the connection we have with Christ? Do we really have a connection with Christ as a church? Or do we have a connection with what Christ can offer? Is the connection you have with Christ purely for who he is? He's the anointed one. Because once you connect with him as an anointed one, all the other things really are going to come. So sometimes the reason why you see these seven lamps are not lighting, it is because our connection is wrong. Our appetites are wrong. Our desires are wrong. The only thing that will cause the oil not to flow in this golden lampstand, the seven, um, the seven candlesticks to light, it is because the oil that is flowing has a misconnection or there is a blockage. So if the oil is flowing, why are we not seeing light? Why are we not being light? So we also need to go to the connection we have with Christ. Since you got born again, what connection do you have with him? I know this sounds very basic, but it's very important. If everything was to be taken from you, will you still have the connection? If what you desire was not to come to pass, will you still have the connection? What keeps you connected to this God? Is it because of the job you're looking for? Is it because of the business you're running? It is because of the children you want to grow well? What causes that connection between you and Christ? Because before the business, before the career, before the marriage, Christ was. So Zerubbabel, if you're going to light and build the temple in Jerusalem, despite the opposition, make sure that your connection with Christ is pure. Praise the name of the Lord. I want to read a scripture because I want to uh, explain something shortly. The book of Isaiah 11 verses 1 to 2. The book of Isaiah 11 verses 1 to 2 says, And there shall come forth the rod out of the stem of Jesse, and a branch shall grow out of his roots. And the spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of the knowledge and and of the fear of the Lord. Now, here we see again, Isaiah is saying something. And he's saying something that I want you now to see because I've already drawn to you a picture of what the seven spirits of God are or how they look in terms of graphically. So here, Isaiah is talking about the coming of Christ. Okay? So he's saying, and there shall come forth a rod out of the stem of Jesse. 
and a branch shall grow out of his roots. And the spirit of and the spirit of the Lord shall rest on him. So number one, we are seeing this Christ that will come. All right? The spirit of the Lord shall rest on him. So generally, we have the, the, the seven lamb sons. I want you to see it again. Now this is Christ. Remember Christ is in you, right? So Christ will come, Isaiah is saying, the spirit of the Lord will rest on him. Okay? Remember, th that is one candlestick. The spirit of the Lord will rest upon him. All right? What else about the spirit? He continues to say, the spirit of wisdom, the spirit of understanding, the spirit of counsel, the spirit of might, the spirit of knowledge, and of the fear of the Lord. So even Christ, when he came, he still had the seven spirits of God. Are you getting it or you're feeling like you are in a double math lesson? You feel like you're in a double math lesson. It's very simple. So now, remember what I told you when we, begin, we began this uh, illustration. We said it is the Holy Spirit, right? That candlestick, that, that, that golden lampstand, or the candle, golden candlestick is one, is a spirit, but different manifestations, right? So Christ is coming in the same spirit, but together with us, he, with that, he has the spirit of understanding, knowledge, wisdom, might, counsel, uh, the fear of the Lord. Are you getting it? So, when we have Christ, now leave alone even the spirit. So once you receive Christ and Christ is in you, what does that tell you? You should have what? All these seven spirits of God. Now, if you want to know that we really should be desperate about this, it's because one of the seven spirits here, as we see, it is the spirit of the fear of the Lord. So the fear of the Lord is one of the spirits. So if you see how we have lacked the fear of the Lord in the end time church, then you know for sure uh, we are not functioning in totality. Because when there is total function of the spirit, one of the things you will see is the fear of the Lord. We are living in a time where people can be born again and do anything because there is no fear of the Lord. So that is just a confirmation that truly we need more than this. Because the fear of the Lord is one of the seven spirits. The spirit of might is like what Samson had. The spirit of might is that which is responsible for the doings of the Lord, the miracles, the signs. Look at how Samson uh, walked in so much might and so much power. In fact, Samson had seven locks on his head for a reason. <laughs> you know, you might think that the hair just grew and for some reason it just went into seven locks. No. Nothing that happens in God that is just a coincidence. So Samson had seven locks representing the same seven spirits. Because Samson was a type and a shadow of Christ. That's why you see when he was born, he was prophesied to be a Nazarite. All right? Not only that, Samson, um, when he died, he actually killed more than when he was alive. The same like Christ. When he died is when we got the victory. So Samson's seven locks are going back to show us the same thing. If you look at how powerful he was, you can tell that was not normal. And yet we are thinking it was the days of Samson, so those things cannot happen today. My friend, they can happen. Let us stop reading the Bible as a storybook. This thing is life. If God could empower Samson the way he did, he can empower any one of us in a very, very great manner. Amen. So we see... One of the people that really modeled might is Samson. And so that is one of um, the dimension of the spirit that as a church we have to catch. The spirit of might. 
if you are going to see miracles again, that candle of might have to be lit. Look at, I believe it was last week, we were talking about um, Bazalel, right? And we said he had the spirit of understanding, wisdom, and knowledge. That is this. Are you getting it? Yes, that is this. So we need to have that. Under, when somebody has understanding that is beyond this realm, understanding of the spirit. Remember, when Daniel was in Babylon and they were looking for somebody who could be able to interpret the dreams of the king, the queen said, there is a man in your kingdom who has got knowledge, understanding, and he, the way she explained, you notice it, this is not just a degree from a lecture room. This is something different. Are you getting it? So when you're talking about understanding here and knowledge and wisdom, it is something that is beyond normal. Whereby somebody can look at something like this, like a tree, and they'll be able to tell you what exactly this tree means. For you, it is a tree, and that is where the story ends. But for somebody else with understanding, they will know this tree and its meaning. Like now you're looking at it, you're wondering, this is just, a, okay, let, let's see, it's a, it's a tree. What other meaning should it have? It's a tree. But somebody who has understanding, they will know what makes this tree, what is the benefit for it, why was it created. That's why the evil kingdom, they are so good in this knowledge and in this kind of understanding. You, when you don't see the meaning of even having any plants in your house, because leave alone now science that tells you you need the oxygen that the plants release and you need it. They understand why plants are important because their understanding goes beyond understanding the way we have it. Are you getting it? Mm -hmm. I taught here about the ground. You remember, most of you that were here, you remember when I was teaching about the fourth dimension. And I explained to you, to most of us, the ground is just something that we walk on. But with somebody who has understanding, they know that that ground has ears. They know that they can take that soil and command it, and the thing they speak to that soil will come to pass. Why? Now, that is now understanding. So you see, when you're talking about the seven spirit of God, we are talking about another level. This is to tell you that we have to open up our minds beyond shallowness. This is not the time when people will tell you that you're now going overboard with the things of the spirit. You know that is what they will tell you. Things of God should be very simple. Mm. All you need to know is that you are born again. Your name is written in the book of life. Do what God helps you to do. Have your family enjoy life and go to. That is what they will tell you. But let me tell you church. We as the end time church. These seven spirits of God. We have to get into it. If we are going to conquer. With the economy we have as a nation, it is going to take beyond knowing mathematics. It is going to take people like Joseph who know how to collide with the angelic. People like Jacob who know how to collide with the angelic until they get the formulas of turning around the economy. Now that is understanding. That is wisdom. That is knowledge that is not of this realm. If you look at the demonic kingdom, what they are pulling right now, it is not the knowledge of this realm. So is your, right now, they are using another knowledge. They are far gone, all right? When we are still in, in this level, praying and, and doing things that we think they, 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 they would really conquer that, they are so far gone. We are back where it was in the days of Noah. When the fallen angels came and taught man the things that man didn't know, that is where we are. So most of the things you are seeing, and they keep on shocking you, dimensions of evil, dimensions of not necessarily everything is evil, but dimensions of technologies, dimensions of medicine, and you're wondering what this is because that is not the realm of knowledge that is from this one. It has been transported and been given to men. Why? Because in their dark kingdom, they know knowledge. No, no, for us, our kingdom, the Holy Spirit, the angels who have been set apart to, uh, to serve the saints, they are waiting with knowledge. But we are just 
hoping that we are going to get the next one thing, we are going to get the next rent, we are going to get the next car. But angels are waiting to show you how to unlock the gold, how to bring territories to Christ, how to do different things that we need to do. How to change the minds of men. People come to us and they tell you, I feel like a, a, a woman, but I'm actually a man. <clears throat> My friend, you're going to need more than that thing that you have right now for you to change that life. Are you understanding? So the darkness we are faced with, all right? Somebody will come around your life. They come from a background of polygamy. They're now getting married. And before even they go through the wedding, they're already seeing some other girl. And you think it, the la, ra, ba, 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 sha, la, 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 is the one that is going to bring them deliverance. You're going to have to have an understanding that knows the answer to that. Yani, we are in a level we cannot do gimmicks. We cannot waste time. We have to begin giving solutions and solutions that are really going to work. <laughs> the question is, how many people are we still going to bury? How many people are we still going to lose in darkness because we don't have the knowledge of what it takes for them to get free? How many young people are we still going to lose in drugs because we don't know, we have got no knowledge, no understanding of what it takes for that man or that woman to come out of it and come out completely? We are losing a generation, and the reason for that is because we have not allowed the seven functions of the Spirit. This is a call for us to go back where God is and stay until you, even you, you will know, this is not normal, this is not me. I had no ability to bring this thing through myself. This is the Spirit. What I'm saying is we have not prayed. What I'm saying is we don't even know prayer. We have to go to a place of prayer until the Spirit reveals himself in his seven glories. Can you imagine how many people go to hell on a daily basis? How many go to hell on a daily basis? Yet the church is here. Can you imagine the, the heart of Christ? He died. What else can he do? Because we have a church that does not know what needs to be done. It was not in vain that when the Spirit of God came, he came in the, on the day of Pentecost, he came uh, as tongues of fire. You remember that? On the day of Pentecost, he came as tongues of fire. It is the same thing he was trying to express. It was not just something he chose. No, he chose to come as tongues of fire, expressing the seven spirits. And that's why if you look at the apostles originally, they were so powerful. Why would he choose that that day he came as fire? Everybody had a tongue of fire over his head. He was saying something. He, he is fire. He is that fire. Now we have reduced that fire to rolling on the floor. When in their time, the fire, the first time they got it, 3,000 came to the Lord. They changed cities. They changed governments. They changed economies. They preached to the Gentiles. Yet even in our time, people who are Christians don't even, are going to a place of not believing anymore. But in their time, Paul was called to be an apostle to the Gentiles. It is time that we call ourselves a meeting and agree that what we were called for, we have not yet achieved. It is time you call yourself to a meeting and tell yourself, next time the Spirit of God quickens you to pray, wake up very quickly. Because if you stay one more day, it means the level you are in, you remain in that level. It means when you go to prayer now, you're telling the Holy Spirit there is more of you. More of you does not mean just you feeling more fire burning in your hands. Is that okay? Yes. Because once we begin to experience the Spirit, we get all these, um, you know, you're going to get your hands feeling like needles and all those things. That's fine. But God, is wondering. <laughs> hey. We have reduced his presence to feeling good. And saying when I was in prayer, my hands were having pins. And now we feel so good about that. 
And we cannot even explain why the pins, but the fact that there was something happening, which is very is important, feel it. <laughs> feel all the pins you can feel. Feel all the fire you can feel. Shout all the shouting you can shout but at the end of the day. How is that translating to God doing what he wants to do through you? You see, these seven spirits, and I'm not teaching about them today, I was just mentioning them. These seven spirits, it is to show you that if you begin to operate in them, you will see the totality of God in every area of your life. You see, the same spirit that gives somebody a job, the same spirit that causes somebody to run multi-million companies. <laughs> so to one person, that spirit can offer just a job. And please, I'm not trying to make you feel bad, okay? I'm trying to provoke us to a place of having the all that is in God, all right? If you're looking for a job, that job will come. But now see, the same spirit that can be believed by a believer to guide you into an employment is the same spirit that another believer can believe and run multi-million companies. <laughs> you see why we must have all the functions? The same spirit that the one believer can believe for a headache to be healed is the same spirit another believer can believe for a territory to get healed. So what we have done, we have dwelt in really the, 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 the list of the functions of the spirit. And the enemy does not want us to know that this saying there is more, there is really more. So I don't know by the spirit that you have, how much you are getting out of the spirit. You see, one of the spirits here also is counsel. Counsel is a, a way of being able to uh, look at things and not get confused. You have the counsel of the spirit. So you don't come here and tell me, Pastor Joyce, please pray for me. Last month, I saw this girl and we were walking on the altar. But now, this month again, I saw the other one and we had two children. Pastor, help me to, to know. It, it is a good request. But when you're having the spirit of counsel, it means there is no confusion in the realm that you're in. That you cannot find yourself in the wrong place without your knowledge. You will know this place is not for me. That you can go on a date and sit, and before you order the milkshake, you are like, okay, this is the thing I'm doing now, and I will never come here again. Why? Because counsel is at work. Even though the guy came and put on the key on the table of a Mercedes Benz or a Lamborghini. That will not blind you. You take your milkshake. Cancel. Do you know, this is very important. You will be surprised. There are people because of lack of counsel. People have even ended up doing some uh, trainings, for example, academically. They're not even supposed to be in. It is not once or twice. I've been prophesying to people. I'm not sure that it's here. But I have found people. I'm asking somebody, so you do this. They are like, no, I do this. But I'm asking, why am I seeing you doing this? Because They will tell you something like, because like several years ago, I really felt I should do that. But it is to mean that prompting was of the spirit. But because of lack of counsel, they went in this other direction. How many people are in marriage today and they are still remembering their exes? Lack of counsel. How many people today are paying loans they should not be paying? 
Because in your head, you, you had a story. You listened to a television program, and they really advertised on this guy who took a loan and did one, two, three, four things, and they became a millionaire in six months. You're like, ah. So this is how people prosper. <laughs> on Monday morning, <laughs> you call your banker, and you have your business plan. And because you're full of the Holy Ghost, you really feel this thing is of the Lord. <laughs> one year down the line, you see you pay. The business is not there. Lack of counsel. So, most of the issues we find ourselves in is because we have lacked these seven spirits of God. Do you know, if you enter to the place where you begin now to enjoy these seven spirits, there are things that will be solved overnight. Have I tell, told you a story of how one time I was looking for money? Remember that story? I've said it so many times. And because of the emergency of the money, <laughs> caused me to pray for so many hours. Until then money came. So I discovered there could be people who give, who tithe, and there is no results. The problem is not the channels of whatever. No, there is a place you have not entered. Because if you enter that place and you get might in the spirit, whatever has been holding your harvest, you destroy it. You understanding? Like, haven't I not told you there were times I used to think only prophets hear audibly? Until one time I pushed prayer for eight hours, I discovered that hearing is there. Am I saying you should pray for eight hours? No, I'm saying that was my journey. That is what I came to, to know. So, and when I, when I began to hear like that, I discovered that hearing brought so much light in matters. So if I have a matter I don't understand, I will pray long. I know I'll get the answer. There are things I will trust the Lord and think in my own faith. He, Lazima, this one God has to give me. And so because I'm not getting it, I enter in prayer. And when I go there, the Lord will show me his mind concerning that thing. I realize that me thinking I should get that thing, it actually it was, <laughs> it was childishness. So God has a better knowledge about why I should get this and not this. There are times I have prayed even to ask the Lord, show me, if you lift me, what will bring me down? He has shown me. Now you're seeing me here as Joyce. I know for sure what can bring me down. So do you think I'm just going to pray like uh, somebody who doesn't know? Hey! You see? Why? Because I realize there is a dimension where you see even what is ahead of you. Okay? So I will, not, I will not be careless just to pray, oh Lord, lift me, lift me. Uh, you know, we know. Um, <laughs> all those people that have been lifted and fell, or maybe not necessarily fall, you know, falling is in different dimensions. Yeah, you can go up and there is no more glory. You can go up and there is no more light. You have not sinned, but you have just been destabilized. What makes you think that you are going to raise one dead, two dead, three dead, five cancers healed, and you still go on climbing, and nothing is talking to you, nothing is challenging you, yet their giants have risen, and you don't hear about them anymore. So when I pray, or when I prayed, it came to a time I asked the Lord, show me my journey. I decided to ask the Lord, now show me. Since this is the plan you have for me, what demon, what principality, what power is waiting ahead? The Lord showed me. So when I am praying, when I'm contending, I will not wait to get there to contend. I will finish that principality when I'm still small. Are you understanding? So when you, when you begin to understand how these seven spirits work, you have light. You, you will not be caught off guard. It is not the will of God for, rise to, for us to rise and fall. It is not the will of God that God blesses you with 5 million, 10 million, and then we don't hear about you anymore. He will show you what is ahead, what can bring you down. Is, if, if money will bring you down, how do you pray that even when you have money, money does not bring you down? It is actually an error that you don't even know what enemies are waiting for you on the road. It shouldn't be like that. You should not be surprised by any demon. 
that you wake up one morning and you find something that you didn't even have an idea. You should have so much light on your path that you know this path I'm going, that is A, B, C, D. So even before I get there, I will deal with you. There are battles that you're not supposed to fight when you get there. You're supposed to fight now. Because when you get there, you may not even have the stamina. Because you not even see clearly. Any enemy you defeat now, they are truly defeated even in the future. So if you defeat the enemy of spiritual complacency now, even when you have 20 million as your bank balance, you will not be complacent spiritually. You will still find yourself in a vigil. You will still find yourself fasting. Why? Because that demon, you dealt with it two years before the 20 million came. So people will be wondering, how come you're living well? How come you have, your life is okay and you're still on fire? Those who lack fire, it is not just because they are careless. No. They lack understanding. They lack wisdom. They lack knowledge. You should have light. Hallelujah. So as long as we are the end time church, there is a way we should be prepared. We see the evil that is in our time. There is so much darkness technologically. There is so much darkness medically. There is so much darkness in families. There is so much darkness even in the house of the Lord. So then, there should be a way we as an end time church are going to be prepared by the spirit to turn that thing around. I don't know about you, but I'm so tired of being ridiculed as a child of God. I am so tired. Like I'm in that place, I'm telling the Lord, Lord, glorify yourself again in the church. I'm telling the Lord, show yourself mighty again in the church, especially in our nation. Hey, if there is somebody who is hungering to see the move of God in this nation, I am hungering. I am at the place I don't even care where it begins, as long as it begins. Even if it doesn't begin here, it begins in Turkana, as long as it is here. In this nation. But then how will it be? It is until we begin to allow the functions, the all functions of the spirit. Can we just put a pause a little bit to the prophesyings? Can we just put a pause a little bit to prophesying new cars and homes? Just a little pause. And let us allow the spirit to showcase his other dimension. We'll be surprised. We'll be very surprised that we can come here and see an operation of the spirit we are asking ourselves. So, <laughs> Pastor Peterson, what was that? Have you ever seen, gone, gone somewhere, the spirit of God moved until you're asking, was that God? Was it Satan? You've never? You don't know. Because it, it, the thing is foreign even to you. How many of you remember those old time churches, those village, you know those village churches that would receive an anointing, a, a, a pouring of an anointing of the spirit? I've been to those kind of revival meetings in the village or some, I know you guys are all born in town, but now, in the villages, I don't know about now, but years ago, I remember going to those old small churches, maybe even made of Mabachi on Bao, and the spirit of God will move. You hear one woman speaking in tongues from that side and another one is interpreting. You open your eyes to see what is happening. And she will speak a whole sentence. Another one will interpret. Do that today. You see five ushers going to shut down that one and, yes, and to shut the other one. We, we have so lost it that even what should be common, we cannot relate with it. we rather be dealing to know if there is areas you need to rectify or smoothen if there is an issue, but not shut the spirit. A gift like that of tongue and interpretation today. <laughs> today. I don't know how many places it's functioning. 
even those who are supposed to function in it, because of the heavy atmosphere to silence the operations of the spirit, they cannot function in that. Because it's a whole atmosphere in the Christian dome. Right now, if you say you are going to raise the dead, the people who are going to discourage you first, they are Christians. <laughs> if we say we have a challenge, the first person that is going to show you, it is good for you to use wisdom. I understand that you have faith. But in this matter, let us also apply wisdom. It is a believer. Because we have become so carnal of this realm that anything that is beyond what we can be able to chew, we can't take it. I'm sure some of the sermons I have ministered on to the fourth dimension, it's only that we don't have a lot of people who follow us like on social media. But I'm telling you, some of those things I said there, there are people if they would listen. <laughs> You'll be told, <laughs> that place you people go. It's a kahola. <laughs> when I was talking here about the different types of plants, you remember? And I'll give you Bible verses, but still, because the church, most of us cannot receive those kind of revelations. <laughs> if I tell you every morning when I wake up, before I take my breakfast, I'll take like seeds, I'll take black seeds or chia seeds. You say, oh, who no. <laughs> Why would I be taking flax seed or chia seeds? You don't even, some people don't even know what that is. They just know seeds, they are demonic. <laughs> Read your Bible well. Read your Bible. You're going to notice that when you allow the Spirit of God to reveal these things to you, even that word doesn't seem important, like God created plants. And then you search about plants, you realize the Spirit is opening you to see different things then you realize that the, the cancer that is in your lineage that is supposed to come to you in 10 years, God will give you a revelation of how to start working in divine healing now. Or what to start eating now. I know, like now I have mentioned those seeds, I know you're just waiting for me to finish, you go to your phone. <laughs> to Google and find out, to ask chat GPT, what is it? What is, Something like flax seed and chia seeds, they, they have very high components that cure cancer. So if you, 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 that is what you have in your system, those cells can never multiply. Are you understanding? So I decided I will live and eat healthy. I, I will not wait to fight with demons that I've seen fighting others and they went. Are you getting it? That is why we pray that prayer point. I will not live my life in the masses of darkness. Where I need to pray for healing, I will pray. Where I need to be using the wisdom of the spirit to live healthy, I will live healthy. All that I have taught in the fourth dimension. So if you are visiting us or you have never listened to the sermons of the fourth dimension, please listen. They will help you. They will really, really help you. Because these are now the, the seven spirits of God. You begin to get a different understanding. These are things we may not even be able to teach in a normal platform. Why? Because people want to hear what they want to hear. I will be talking to you here about seeds, but what you really want to hear is about the V8. <laughs> hey. So God said unto Zerubbabel, it is not by might or by power, but by the Spirit. Now, do you now understand what God means is by the Spirit? Yeah. So this whole explanation I have done, these whole diversions of examples and all that, it is to only explain to you is by the Spirit. When we are talking about the Spirit, He is so diverse. That's why John saw the seven lampstands. The golden lampstand with seven candles. Because there is so much there that we ignore or we don't know or we walk in ignorance about it. 
but it is time you and me if we are going to build going forward we have to allow the seven spirits of god to begin working in your life i've heard there is a group here the hungry team those are the people you need to connect to people whose mind have gone beyond what is common and actually here in the watchers hub if you if you talk to two three people you will know uh uh these are not normal people these are not normal people because we have come to notice that is just there is things beyond that we cannot get just in a normal way we have to know that we are praying and fasting as the holy ghost i surrender myself to you let this, the seven functions that you have begin to operate in you in my life show me how I can be if I, I allowed you to operate through me in understanding. Show me how my life would be if I was allowing knowledge, counsel, the fear of the Lord. Show me how I would be like. Do you know most of the time the prophetic words we have, they are a product of somebody who has worked in these seven spirits. And so what they remain to be prophecies is because there is a condition for everything to be fulfilled. So if you don't meet that condition, then you're going to see it in the spirit, but you're not understanding there is a way you should allow yourself to be carried of the spirit for you to be able to enter into that fulfillment. There are some people here, if you would put your knees down this week, that money you've been trusting God for, it will come to you, be very shocked. I believe with all my heart. There are some people who are listening to me here. That if this week you put your knees down and tell the Lord, let your counsel be upon me. The things that have been confusing you, you don't know what is happening in your life, you see it like a daylight movie. There are people listening to me here. That business that is not working, if you really entered to that place where you allow the Holy Ghost to have liberty, you will have understanding of what is the problem and how do you solve that problem. It is not God's will for us to suffer. It is not his will for us to live a substandard life. It is not his will for us to not have the best. And so when we allow the spirit to function in totality, money should not be a problem. Our family should not be a problem. People not coming to Christ should not be a problem. Economy of a nation should not be an issue. We just need one Joseph. The economy of this nation will turn around. We just need one Daniel. Governments will turn around. We just need one Esther. The spirit of death will be put to death. Are you getting it? Why? Because once we begin to know there is a different function of the spirit that we need to tap into, we begin to flow. What my husband calls autopilot. Now, wherever he's taking you, you go. I don't know how far you have gone in the spirit. I don't know what's going on. Maybe you have wings like the kangaroo team that have wings. But as you fly with that wing, okay? Make sure you're flying and, and, and changing things where you're flying to. Because sometimes what we do, that one kind of one is one city lights. We are, where we are done. Oh my God. I was in Jamaica yesterday. And that is going to be your testimony for the next one month. That is one candle. <laughs> if you allow all of them to light, Hey, you're going to be so powerful. And you know, can you imagine if now the way we are here, if everybody hey, was operating that level, we would take this nation in a very short time. Can you imagine? Can you imagine if the financial guru, they began to understand where their silver and gold is and how to unlock it? The prophet begins to decode to us and tell us what to do for the salvation of this nation. We have heard enough about prophecies of cars. That is that an Elijah rises and tells us how to bring down the Jezebel of this nation. How powerful would that be? Then we get another one. Who knows how to direct young girls so that they don't go dying where they are dying? Who know how to groom them? Young boys, who know how to groom them? How powerful would, would that be? I don't know. 
how far you have allowed the spirit of God to function in your life. I don't know what is going on in your life that you can call as the spirit. I, as a preacher, I'll be lying to you if I tell you I know every dimension. I don't know. I don't know. In fact, I believe some of you will begin to operate in dimensions. Even me, I'll need God to help me to know what that is. Thank you, Spirit of God. Thank you, Spirit of God. Thank you for the seven dimensions. The seven spirits of God. Seven spirits of God. The seven spirits of God. Give us a mind to fathom. Give us a mind to fathom. The seven spirits of God. Give us capacity to operate in the seven spirits of God. some of you will begin feeling like fire on your on the crown of your head on the crown of your head this is a fresh release on the crown of your head as you're desiring the seven spirits of God to find expression through you I see a touch on your on your on the crown of your head you're feeling like fire you're feeling like fire that is a flame of fire. The flame of fire. That's a flame of fire of the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost is truly causing us to walk in the seven spirits. He's truly going to manifest himself in the sevenfold anointing of the spirit. Yes, you can feel fire. It's like the days of Pentecost. It's like the days of Pentecost. Fire can feel the fire on your head. Yes, that fire. Yes, right there at the back. The fire is there. The fire is there. The fire is there. The fire is there at the back, at the back row. The Holy Ghost is moving powerfully. The Holy Ghost is moving powerfully. opening I see a type of prophet that the Lord is raising and these prophets you are going to be the kind of prophets who prophesy symbolically so if you're going to there they are if you're giving a prophecy you're going to symbolically express it Like God will speak to you in symbols. Walk in the dimension that the Lord allows you. Don't be embarrassed to say what the Lord wants you to say symbolically. I declare here in the watcher's hub, everybody will walk in the dimension they catch. Your fire will not be quenched. 
your fire will not be quenched your dimensions will not be aborted he's glorious in his ways some of you the Lord will just send you into cities because you're prophetic once you enter this city Christ will begin working in that city prophetic some of you the Lord will tell you to board a matatu go somewhere and you will not be able to know what is this all about prophetic different prophetic dimension you are glorious so glorious in your way 